Hey, it's Rob Moore here. So, what, about 10 days ago, I did something that I was a little bit scared to do, uh, but it ended up being the most successful video I've done of the whole of 2019, yet it's only been live 10 days. Uh, and that was I shared uh, probably the most deep, impactful results of personal development I've ever had in my life um, in, my, in one of my therapy sessions. So... It's no surprise to anyone that's followed me for a little while that I'm a big fan of coaches, mentors, being in masterminds, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants and leveraging the experience of others and an ongoing desire to grow and improve and better yourself and self-actualize. And so for 15 years, I've had coaches, mentors, been in masterminds of all types and ages and varieties and niches, you name it. Um, excuse me a minute. <laughs> But, damn it, <laughs> I'll get there. Um, and I'd never really thought to have a therapist. Uh, I suppose I perceived that you need to be fucked up to have a therapist or you need to have something broken. Uh, and uh, I had probably my second most impactful therapy session the day before yesterday. And I'm gonna share with you the results and musings and experiences of that and how I think it can help you and how I can get you to develop yourself um, to have the best year of your life um, or just to get the results that you want to be successful and happy despite your failings. So the title of this live stream and podcast um, is uh, along the lines of how to be happy and successful while still being screwed up. And I'm screwed up. And I think we're all to a certain degree screwed up and carrying baggage. Uh, and I think you can still be successful and happy in everything that you want. So I'm going to share that. A couple of quick things first. So it's my birthday today. Uh, I am 41. Uh, and my birthdays since my 40th birthday have more of a special meaning now. So, uh, there's a, a few anniversaries to celebrate. So my son got a hole in one three years ago today on my birthday. He's had nine hole in ones. So my birthday is always going to be a memory for that. Um, but also I watched the Alexander McQueen documentary on the 2nd of January, completely and utterly blew my mind, like make, made me want to live a life so much bigger and more impactful than I'd been living for the first 40 years. I based a, a, a brand new marketing mastermind launch on um, being so inspired by the McQueen documentary. Uh, really, really did impact me in such a deep way. And um, you know when people say if there's anyone alive or dead that you could meet, McQueen, Alexander McQueen, number one. Um, and so every year uh, I'm going to honour that, um, the life of Alexander McQueen, um, whether it's a special launch or I come to London and go to Bond Street and go and see my friend Tuffy, who's the manager of the McQueen store. I'm going to the McQueen store today um, just to make these anniversary anniversaries and these things that are going on in life more special and more meaningful. Uh, and so to celebrate this birthday, I'm going to be opening something very special. I'll actually do it tomorrow. So it will be the day after my birthday because I'm in London today. Uh, but I've got the launch of something that I think that you'll love. If you want to start a business, scale a business, grow a business, have your best year ever. Um, if you want to generate multiple streams of leads and, and create multiple streams of income and have your m most wildly successful financial year, you'll want to keep your eye out tomorrow because I'm going to launch something which you will love. And an amazing birthday deal, amazing birthday discount, amazing birthday bonuses. But anyway, let's get going then with um, the, the, the therapy session that I had. So I've probably learned more about myself in the last two months as I have in the last 15 years. Now, in the last 15 years, I've learned more about myself than my whole life before that. Oh, by the way, thank you all who've been sending me birthday messages. That's great. It seems that some of you even give me birthday stars. You are so generous. I've just got two pounds and 200 stars for my birthday. Two dollars, sorry. Thank you very much. So uh, I'd done no personal development up to the age of 26, and it showed. No mentors, no masterminds, no accountability. I wasn't learning from anyone. I was very, uh, I didn't understand the difference between perception and reality. I was very myopic. I believe this was right and this was wrong. They're successful, I'm not. They're lucky, I'm not. They can, I can't. I had a very binary, black or white view of life, and that didn't serve me at all. But I didn't know what I didn't know. And, and I don't know if any of you are into personal development. Give me a, give me a yes if you're into personal development and growth and self actualization and investing in yourself and studying yourself. Um, because I didn't even know that was a thing before I was the age of 26. It was, you, know, like, you know, when people say self help, often that's really frowned upon by people. Self help, what? Are you, it's like an admission that you're broken. And that was me before 2006. 
And then I um, listen to a, a set of um, audio CDs, Get the Edge and Personal Power by Tony Robbins. I didn't even know that they were personal development. My um, flatmate, uh, he was moving out and selling some of his stuff. He'd lived with me for a few years in my house, rented my second room. And he said, hey, mate, I've got this um, bunch of CDs. You should listen to them. And I thought it was I thought Tony Robbins was a singer songwriter and he was going to strum along and I was going to listen to him playing the guitar while I was doing my art. And little did I know, it was this massive American with a bigger voice and bigger hands right in your face. And um, yeah, so that that was like the the sort of the wormhole opener, you know, the door that opens doors, that opens doors, that opens doors. And I've been this um, fervent, is that the word, um, obsessive um, student of personal development and myself and other people and human development and our capacity um, to achieve and to grow and to self actualize and to make a difference and to, you know, become uh, the greatest potential of ourselves. Um, and I've, I've been on that journey for 15 years, spent more than a million quid, probably 1.3, 1.4 in personal development, education courses, mentors, masterminds, retreats for myself, my staff, my partners, my family, you name it. But then in the last two or three months since I've had a therapist, things have dramatically changed. I just want to say, wow, thank you for all of you guys who are giving me stars. Is this because it's my birthday or you're just enjoying the content? It can be either, but mwah, thank you. I love you. Um, I couldn't think of anything better to do than to be in London um, and to sharing some of my birthday with you. Uh, you'll see why in a moment when I talk about this session. So my therapist, I've had her for about three months. We've had about nine or 10 sessions. And I didn't go because I was broken. I went because I was sort of, I'd had my biggest year in my business, which I had intended to do. But I was sort of, I felt a bit lonely, to be honest. I felt like, you know, I'd got to the top of my tree. Um, I did have some mentors at the time, but I think that I wasn't able to be sort of emotionally open with them. And I, I was just battling some things, battling maybe the, the, all the things I had going on in my life. We had a few challenges going on. Sometimes, I don't know if you can relate to this, but uh, when you run your own business and you, you know, you're pushing ahead and you're the leader of your organisation, who supports you? Who cares for you? Who's there for you? And I felt quite lonely and I was like, I've got to figure these some things out for myself, but I'm not sure that I can. And I had these feelings of started to get a bit frustrated, a little bit of resentment um, towards some people in my life who I didn't think were noticing me enough or honouring what I'd done. You know, like most of my family uh, are paid by me or live on what I earn and do. You know, I've 80 odd staff in the offices. Um, hundreds, maybe even thousands of clients who are very successful based on the work that I've done. And sometimes I, I can feel like that's a bit of a thankless task. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying I can feel that way. And I got myself a bit cornered in my head around that. So, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it. I think I have a lot of failings and flaws. I'm going to share some of them in this live stream and on, on this podcast. But I think one of the things that's not a flaw of mine, i.e. one of the things I'm, I'm quite good at is I'm up for testing stuff. I'll try it. Fuck it. Let's try it. J-F-D-I. Just fucking do it. So I didn't really think about getting a therapist or not over the last 15 years. But as soon as I, it came into my equation, hmm, maybe I should think about having a therapist. I was like, right, let's try it. So I tried one, an American one off this website, didn't really um, get me. I tried another one, didn't really listen. I tried another one, was projecting their meaning onto me too much for my liking. And so about on my third or fourth therapist, I stumbled on one that I thought, mm, you know, she's listening to me. She's letting me talk it all out. You know, I mean, I have so many really great, interesting conversations with great, interesting people, which I'm grateful for. I'm meeting Kevin Clifton for lunch, who's one of my best friends now. Uh, obviously, massive on Strictly Come Dancing. I'm becoming really good friends with Grant Cardone and um, good friends with Jake Wood and uh, many other very successful hundred millionaires, billionaires. And I have some really interesting conversations with those guys. And that's definitely therapeutic to me. But the problem is when it's a conversation, you can't go deep enough. Because you start a conversation, you start opening up, then they talk back and then you talk and then they talk back. And then you go down these other tangents that maybe you hadn't desired to go down. And, and people, when they listen to you, they can't help but judge you. Like when I talk to my business partner about my emotional stuff, he, he can't help but think, how does that affect my profit and loss? Um, because you can't blame him for that, uh, because that's what we do. We read the world and we read people based on our, our own perceptions and projections and I felt like I needed to speak to someone who wouldn't do that or uh, who would let me go deep enough for me to just discover what was beneath all this stuff that was going on by the way I had the best year of my life as well so it's a real paradox to think I've had the best year of my life made the most money um, you know had some amazing things happen my podcast is amazing the community is amazing uh, my books are doing great I've got more followers and a bigger personal brand than I've ever had 
and we're going global, all these great things. Yet there was still a big nagging feeling of loneliness and, um, you know, like just who's helping me. And, you know, I struggled with that a bit. So anyway, I hired the the therapist and I went in there to be honest, thinking, well, you know what? I know where my baggage comes from because I've done a lot of personal development. My baggage comes from being a fat kid, not getting noticed by the girls, not really being in the inner circle of cool kids at school, having to fight for attention, therefore getting an over need for attention, therefore having an over need to be liked, therefore avoiding conflict. Uh, I learned strategies to fit in. You know, I learned how to be funny. I learned how to be liked by all um, groups at school. So when I was at, um, when I, even when I lost my weight, I was friends with the kind of like the grungy guys, friends with the cool guys, friends with the sporty guys, friends with the geeky guys. I, I, and, you know, I was probably only one of the, probably the only person in school that was friends with everyone. But that for me was a coping mechanism to get noticed and be involved because as an overweight kid, I didn't feel noticed and involved. I felt bullied brutally, but it wasn't ever really physical. It was all emotional and mental, which for me was worse. Um, And actually, I was a bit, but a lot of it was just in my head. You know, they say 99% of the things you worry about never actually happen. Well, this was really in my head. And and I just made it worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And I went and lost all the weight moving from school to school. I lost three stone in eight weeks or nine weeks. A dramatic, really like excessive extreme diet. I drank eight or nine cans of Diet Coke a day because I thought that if you drink Diet Coke, it actually makes you lose weight. Well, if you drink eight or nine cans of Diet Coke a day and don't eat any food, you do lose weight. But you won't be seeing that in any diet um, plans and fads for 2020. Um, but my therapist keeps going, Rob, I see the child in you. Rob, I see the child in you. And I'm like, ah! And she's like, go, go earlier, go earlier, go earlier. And she's always pushing me earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. Now, I kind of felt like, okay, so my void, my pain, you know, my kryptonite is that I have this over need to be liked, to be noticed, to be admired, to be respected, um, you know, to feel valuable, to feel important to people because I just so lacked it as an overweight kid. Um, I I had some extreme embarrassment as as a fat kid at sports days and swimming lessons and stuff like that. Um, which scarred me emotionally in a, in a very painful way, which would then come up in the future with when people would reject me or even in business transactions. Uh, it seems strange. I was having a conversation with a, a mentee of, well, you know, someone who took me up on a 15 minute call and she said, you know, I had this a personal event happen to me and I can't believe how um, business situations bring up all those emotions. She was surprised. She thought they'd be separate. They're not separate. You, you know, your baggage and your pain and your emotional hijacking and the triggers, that business is the thing that will pick that scab the most because business is hard and business is a hustle. Um, uh, but the earlier my um, therapist took me back to it as a child, um, the, the more we both realised actually it does go a lot deeper. Uh, and so um, before I move on and tell you what happened, I just want to tell you why I'm telling you this, because it's really important. Um, of course, I, for me, one of the best things in the world to do, I really do feel grateful and privileged for this, is to share what I'm doing in my life and what I'm struggling with and what I'm figuring out and be able to inspire you know, hundreds of thousands of people and help you do the same. Uh, And I'm constantly given feedback that when I share this more vulnerable, as people call it, or maybe personal stuff, I'm constantly given feedback that that is some of my best content. My mental health content, now this therapy content, I have the biggest outpouring of gratitude and and feedback and constantly getting the highest views on the live streams and listens on the podcast. So I'm going to endeavour to do more of that until you tell me I've overshared and and, and then I'll go back. The next thing is, I'd figured out a long time ago um, that the skill set without the mindset will leave you upset. And that's what one of my personal development coaches always says. The skill set without the mindset will leave you upset. So the work you do on yourself and your, um, you know, your, your personal development, your mindset, your, your emotional management and control, how you feel about yourself, your self-worth, etc., that is all vital. Um, and you can get mentors and be in masterminds and be held accountable by other people and do courses and get educated and listen to podcasts and um, listen to audio books and read books and follow influencers. And you can do all that and that's great. But it will be a much slower journey if that is fighting against your mindset, your emotions and your lack of self-worth. So you get those all raised up to a good level. 
then all, all the other stuff is just going to be completely accelerated. Your business is going to grow quicker. You're going to make more money. You're going to be more, be more fulfilled. You're going to be more successful. You're going to raise more um, partnerships and finance. Your life is going to be infinitely better in all those areas. So it's like, um, it's like it has a, 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 um, a compounded benefit effect. It's like a virtual, virtuous um, cycle. So um, the next uh, thing is I really believe in having mentors and masterminds and getting accountable uh, and coaches. And now I believe in having a therapist, too. So I believe in getting help from those that have been there and done it. And there's a few people that are saying, oh, well, you shouldn't have it. You don't need mentors. You don't need to get help. You've got to figure it out yourself. Well, how do you figure out the baggage you had as a child? Um, and you're, um, and when I, by the way, when I say baggage, none of us have baggage. We just have things in our childhood that we liked and we've got good memories on and warm, fuzzy emotions. And then we've got things that we felt we lacked, whether it's love from our mother or father or some kind of abuse or loneliness or, um, you know, extreme challenge or significant emotional event. Um, and that creates these voids and these pains in us. Uh, and it, that, that's really hard to figure out yourself. I don't know anyone who could figure out that, that yourself. Um, and so like, I've always figured out that if I want to be great at marketing, get someone who's great at marketing. If you want to be great at business, someone who's got an amazing business if I want to hire, uh, sell a business someone who sold it um, we have good lawyers y you know like you wouldn't do a legal contract yourself would you that'd be stupid you'd hire a good lawyer so I'm, I'm gobsmacked to how many people think they could just go and figure things out for themselves well maybe you can in the end but it's going to take you years and cost you loads of money and you're going to figure out a contract yourself good luck with that you'll fuck it up um, and I and so it's the same with marketing and sales and business and recruitment and HR and strategy and vision. And I've, I've just figured it out by learning from the best people and reading the best books, podcasts, getting mentors, etc. But therapy has been the missing link for me. I'm quite an emotional person. Um, I'm quite a, a soft cuddly person a lot of people don't realize that about me a few people have said to me recently wow Rob I just thought you were all about the money I can't believe uh, this side of you I didn't know that that's just because they don't know me um, uh, so if I can help you discover um, these things that happened in your past in your childhood which aren't right or wrong or good or bad uh, or um, you, you know they're not you're not broken you are you uh, and you are unique and you've had unique experiences uh, and understand that. So my therapist keeps saying to me, Rob, I just want you to connect with that child view. I want you to go back there when you were two climbing out of the cot or in the cot scared of the massive, massive crack in the ceiling. Or when you felt alone because your mum and dad were working down the, um, in the pub for eight, your first eight or nine years of your life or Christmas Day when you were on your own or your birthdays when you were on your own. I want you to connect to that child. And I'm like, <laughs> um, so I, I, she says to me, I get it logically, um, but she says she wants me to connect more emotionally to that, that child. So um, the reality of my upbringing, which, by the way, I, I feel like I had a really good upbringing. I feel like my mum and dad did a great job. I really loved them and I don't think they did anything wrong. But my upbringing as it was, what I lacked was attention. What I lacked was um, people playing with me. What I lacked was um, having people around. What I lacked was connection with people because my sister and I were always left upstairs in the pubs and bars that we lived in up until probably age eight. So apparently this naught to five, naught to seven formative years are huge. Uh, and, and we were just often left up there alone. Uh, we were alone on Christmas days, other than the, the early in the morning. We were alone on birthdays. We were alone on New Year's. We always fell asleep alone. Um, and I've got some things that happened um, relating to being alone. Uh, and actually, my therapist worked out that the common thread in everything in my life that is linked to void or pain or need is from feeling of not being noticed and the feeling of being alone. Not abused, not, um, you know, robbed of any childhood per se, but just feeling either alone or bored or unnoticed or not valued because of being alone. Um, and so uh, everything in my life, everything, it's like I, I was talking to a few people about this, including my therapist, I think I can link everything in my life in terms of what I do and what I need and what drives me and my vision and my business and my brand and my interactions with people. Everything is based on filling that void of not being alone. I don't really like, I like being alone, but I don't like being alone with nothing to do because of then I go back to that feeling. So I like to be alone, but working on my laptop or doing social media or doing a live stream or whatever. Um, I like being around people. I need connection with people. Um, and 
it's also the driver of everything great in my life. So um, why do I do live streams all day over Christmas and New Year? Some people are like, Rob, take a break. You should take a break. No, because I need the connection from you. Um, why have I built all these great communities like the Supporter Programme and all of you who are giving me stars and all of you are listening to my podcast? Um, why am I doing that? Because ultimately, I want to be noticed. I want to be respected, admired. I don't want to feel alone. Why do I write so many books? Why do I still need to keep writing new books? Why do I keep needing to grow the business? Because ultimately, I want to connect with people and I want to feel important and valuable. Uh, and actually, I was saying this to my wife, um, one of the reasons that my company, Progressive Property, has grown every single year, we have seen so many property companies come and go and come and go. A big one went down last year, 2019. Um, a couple of other quite big ones are going under a big disruption and challenge at the moment and are struggling. Progressive have grown every single year, every single year, and we still have a really great re reputation in an industry where there's a, a cohort of really big critics of the training industry. Um, and uh, honestly, the honest answer above all, I mean, there's a million things I could talk to you about that we've done well. And there's definitely quite a, a million things I could talk to you about that we've made mistakes and, challenge, and, and had challenges on. But the one overriding reason is because I have the need to connect with people. I have the need to be noticed and liked and respected and admired. So I'm going to fix problems. I'm going to sort out clients. I'm going to imp always improve our business. I'm going to be I'm very open and accessible online. People often say to me, Rob, why are you always on social media? How are you so accessible? Why do you do all these 15 minute one to one calls? You know, why, 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 why? You know, like um, people at your level, they don't normally engage in Facebook groups, blah, 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 because of that need to be connected and noticed and admired and respected. And here's the irony of all of this. I get it from you the most. So uh, you don't really realise how much I love you as a supporter and as a podcast listener. You don't know how much you're with me on my journey and how much you make me feel whole and, and not empty. Because actually I get so much praise, praise and attention and respect um, and lovely messages from you and gratitude. Um, of course, I, get, I have some critics too, and that's also part of the game. And I'm OK with that. And I also feel grateful for that, you know, once I've, I've got over being pissed off. And I think what happened last year to, to force me to get to this therapy was that I wasn't feeling that with the people around me. I wasn't so much feeling that with my family and my business partner and my um, MD, etc. It wasn't anything to do with anything they were doing wrong because this is not about them. It's not that, that that person or that person or that person isn't giving me what I need. It's nothing to do with anyone else. It's all to do with me and my childhood and my upbringing. Because as soon as I go, oh, I need this, you're not giving me it. I need this, you're not giving me it. I need this, you're not giving me it. Then they're on the defensive because they feel blamed. But it's not their fault. It's who I am. And I think it took me a long time to actually accept this because I felt like it was weak. There was something wrong with me. Why would I need that? Why do Surely you should just not need anything from anyone. You should just be strong and you know you, you can you can solve your own problems and meet your own needs you don't need anyone else hmm. not me not me maybe you not me but here's my read on this situation my read is you have your own void and you know some people have had abuse and trauma and significantly painful events which have formed these emotional triggers and these voids and these needs in you uh, and I think the more I under understand about myself, the more I understand about other people. And when I see someone and I think, hmm, I'm not sure I like that about you. I remember that probably comes from a need and a void. And I go, hmm, I'm sometimes like that. And actually, if I were like you, I would be like that. And th there's nothing wrong with you. And therefore, I respect that about you. And I think the more you un understand people, the more you can get more clients, build a bigger community, have more friendships and social situations. So, yeah, it's been it's like the more I learn about myself, the more I learn about other people. And um, so, yeah, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm getting some lovely comments here. Some people saying uh, that they're getting the tissues out. I respect how honest you are, um, et cetera. Um, I just want to say, like, taking all emotion out of it. This is me. This is who I am. And it's OK. And um, I've got weaknesses and strengths, as have you. And who you are it, with your weaknesses and your strengths is you and who you are. And it's OK. Uh, and it's OK. And, I, and f f probably for 10 years, I fucking hated this about myself. Why am I so needy? Why do I need people? You know, like, oh, what a weak, what a weak little bastard I am. Why do I need approval? Why do I need to be noticed? You know, but then, but like, no. 
I mean, I think as a human species, we're all interdependent. I mean, we have to serve each other. Someone has to cook, someone has to make the shoes, someone has to make the clothes, someone has to um, you know, run the supermarkets. If you think about it, without each other, we couldn't survive as a race. So we're interdependent. We, ser- we can produce and consume and serve and be served interdependently through each other. So to that degree, well, I think we all need um, that connection and that, um, I-, I don't know, we have other needs from people. Um, so what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Hmm, that's me. So I actually like that about myself now, which for me is a massive personal growth. Because going from hating it about myself, what, it, it, let's look at this void of me. And by the way, I want to encourage you to think of yours. So, you know, like it's not just a therapy session for me. Uh, if I could get you to be honest about your voids and your failings or, or your perceived failings yourself and the things you lacked as a child that now you, sh- you really strongly need that are big holes in your soul, the voids that drive your values. Um, if you can work out what they are and then actually understand it's not broken. It's not a failure. It's not a failing. It's not a bad about you. It's who you are. And it has an equally balanced upside. That's a massive gift, a massive gift that I could give to you. And that's a gift that I've received to my, for myself this year. So I actually like about myself that I have needs from other people to be noticed, not alone. Um, you know, to like, if someone just says to me, hey, Rob, thank you for this, or I like that you did that, or they sent me, a, a, they wrote me a little hand note, or they just made a, a very small effort to notice me. It doesn't have to be massive grand gestures. That makes me feel warm inside. Um, I said to my therapist, and she, man, she feasted over this, get this. Um, but I said to my therapist, and she thinks this is where it comes from, and I'm going to wait, because I think it's too easy for a therapist to say, oh, it all came because you didn't get love from your dad, or it all came from when you were two. And I challenge her as much as she challenges me. We had, we had a big ding-dong session. It was quite a hard session, and I pushed back on her like she pushed back on me. I gave her some feedback as well. Um, but I said to her, um, you know, like I didn't see my dad as maybe as much as I would have liked in my, in my um, youth. Uh, And my dad is not emotional at all. So he never said, I love you. Never, I don't think. I think I got a hug from him once or twice. And one was when he came out of um, the um, Ward 5, you know, the mental uh, health area of the hospital when he'd been in there for months and I hadn't seen him. And um, I think twice in the last 10 years, dad has said to me something along the lines of, son, I'm proud of you. Uh, And when he said that, it was just like, it was like I'd have a massive hit of caffeine and like if I could die and go to heaven right now, that my life would be complete. Um, and so she was like, ah, you know, she feasted all over that. Um, that you, you know, out of my mum and dad, my dad was the one I didn't get as much love or attention or praise as maybe I'd have desired. Because um, my mum was always there and supportive. And I, I'm told that you usually don't get enough love from either your mum or your dad. It's one or the other. And, and so she thinks a lot of it is driving from not getting that and needing that. Now, his, that's morphed over time. So, like, um, my wife was saying to me, well, um, do you think your dad's proud of you? And I said, yeah, I think he is. Um, and, you know, if he said it to me, because, I, I, like I said, I get something like that once every five years, um, then I would feel warm and made and full and whole. Um, uh, like when he used to come and watch me play sport. I, I absolutely loved him coming to watch me play sport because he was there and I could be with my dad and I could impress him. And so I'd be so over the moon if I got some runs in cricket or if I played really well in rugby. And I only wanted to get runs in cricket or play well in rugby only to please him. And if I didn't, I'd feel mortified and I'd let him down and embarrassed and I'd just get really upset. Um, So, yeah, so a lot of it is driven by that. But um, I don't feel that anymore for my dad in that I don't feel the need to impress him. I don't feel the need for him to give me that feedback that I've done well. I think he thinks that and I'm happy with that. Um, And even if he didn't like what I did, I'd be okay with that. So I think it's grown beyond my dad. Um, And so maybe there's this child version of me and this adult version of me. But one thing I can tell you is if I didn't get it from my followers, my fans, some people close to me, I would feel really empty and lifeless and soulless and personless. It's almost like a fuel for me. It fills my void. It's it's my soul. So anyway, um, uh, your voids create your values. So the, the pains and the gaps and the holes in your soul drive 
um, what you want and what you shoot for and what you find most important in your life. And I've discovered this about myself. So I've done quite a lot of study on values and what drives us as individuals. And what a lot of people don't realise is that what drives you, your pursuit of the things that are most important to you in your life, often come from what you don't have. So a lack. So people all of a sudden get interested in money and money becomes important when they're bloody skin and it costs them dearly in their life because they didn't have any money. Um, or relationships become important when they lose them. Um, or, of course, um, raising a child becomes important because you've, you've not done that yet. Um, although that's, I think that's a bit, little bit more complicated, raising children, because I think there's something biological that happens, chemical. Um, but anything that you lose or you don't have or um, you feel missing or unwhole in, in your life is probably going to paradoxically become a value and a driver for you. And so that's what mine is. The, the lack of attention and being noticed and being played with as a kid and always having to fend for myself, it, which created strong independence, by the way. Um, I, I could cook, clean, iron and look after myself by probably age 10. And a lot of my mates couldn't do it by age 20. So it's a, a hyper independent. But um, it's the constant driver for me. And that's, I believe it's a bucket with a hole in it that will never be repaired. I believe it's a hole in my soul that will never be full. But because of that, I'll always strive to build a bigger community, connect with you more, make a bigger difference on the planet. Um, you, you know, and it's selfishly and selfishly, uh, in selfish and selflessly intrinsically linked. I, it's, it's totally meeting a selfish need, writing more books, getting more reviews, getting you know, a, a wider reach, doing more podcasts, getting better ranking, getting more well-known, building a vast personal brand, making more money, growing a bigger company, being the number one company, all these things. It's filling a very selfish need of mine to, to be noticed and whole and important uh, and seen, just to be seen. Um, but it also serves my readers, my listeners, my community, um, you know, the thought of making a mistake uh, in front of everyone. I've kind of got over that now, but like, I don't mind making a mistake, but I'll have to fix it. Um, I don't mind letting people down from time to time because I'm human, but I'll have to try and fix it. I won't be bullied. I won't have the piss taken out of me because I've learned to be strong now. Um, but, you know, I, I will always go and fix problems. I'll always listen to your feedback and like continually chuck new bonuses in the supporter program, continually chuck new bonuses in the stars program, continually evolve my content to give you what you want. You have a massive impact on my podcasts, my books, my book titles, my courses, you know, my products and everything that my company does because um, I'm always listening to what you want because I need to be noticed and respected and Im important in your life. Um, and that is me. This is me. This is who I am. So um, uh, I've not quite finished, but a couple of things. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. It, it is my birthday today. Um, uh, wow, a load of you have given me stars today. I guess you're just doing that because you're feeling generous for my birthday. I've got some big plans for the stars program, by the way. I'm going to probably do a long live stream and um, do a charity raise for my foundation on the stars program. Um, and I'm going to be offering lots of bonuses coming up. I do shout outs, don't I, often for the stars that um, people give me. Facebook stars are Facebook's new currency, which you can just purchase near the writer comment on the live videos. Um, and hey, look, I'm trying to disrupt and create a, a, a really fair exchange, equitable service with the stars program. I mean, there's a lot of people who just give stars and receive stars. Well, there's only 20 in the world who can give and receive or well, receive stars. But there's a lot of people who do the stars program based on being fan funded because they need support. I don't need support. Um, so I want to create some equity and something equitable for you, i.e. some kind of value. So um, I'll probably learn more about myself in the last two therapy sessions than I have um, in 15 years of personal development. I'm not going around saying to everyone they should have a therapist. This is not what it's about. That's your choice. I tested a few because some are good and some are not good. And I found the one so far that's right for me. I believe life exists in um, um, equally balanced paradox of everything. So the paradox of my therapy session is that I've found my innermost need and desire and void of not being noticed and being alone as I was growing up and um, things that created uh, memories and emotional triggers in me. Um, and I hated that about myself, that neediness. But I, the paradox is that is my greatest strength. So it's my kryptonite and my superpower at the same time. And uh, so I would encourage you to think honestly about, OK, you know, what 
how were you raised? What did you miss? What, 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 where did you not get what you needed as a child? How has that formed who you are? How is that driving what you're doing, your decisions, your actions, your interactions, your relationships? Um, what do you hate about yourself and what have you not owned about yourself that you can actually go and love yourself for? How can you see the equally um, paradoxically paradoxical upside benefits of all those flaws and, and voids in you? Uh, and then I think once you get, get answers there, your um, health, your happiness, your wealth, your success, your growth, your business, they are going to supercharge. I'm convinced of that. So thanks for watching this birthday live stream, which will also go on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. We're in the middle of a mini series on mentors, masterminds, accountability and results for 2020. This is a little bit of a different one, but it's still in the series. Um, I've got four or five of this series in a row going on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. So make sure that you listen to that. And tomorrow is a massive day because I'm relaunching something huge um, celebrating on my birthday. It's the chance to be in a mastermind with me. It's the only mastermind of its type, I believe, in the country. It's an absolute steal of a bargain compared to Inner Circle Mastermind Elite and my mentoring services, uh, which one is 22 and a half thousand plus fat, one is 25,000 plus fat. This one is an absolute shave. It's a tiny slice of that because it's a slightly bigger mastermind program. So you'll have the chance to work with and learn from and be mentored and masterminded by me personally. Um, I've probably got places for about 40 people. I might take 41 as a theme for my 41st birthday. Um, I launched this last year, but this is like version three of it, a way bigger, better, uh, more tested version of it. Um, and I got 220 applications for the 40 places. So this is going to be huge. So make sure you, you watch my page and you listen to my live streams tomorrow. Um, now, if you're listening to the podcast, you need to find me on social media and message me about this. But if you're watching my video, this tomorrow will be due January the 5th. Um, I'll do a, a video in the morning, a video in the evening, and then I'll close it off. So it's just a one day launch. Um, I might drag it into the second day. We'll see, but it certainly won't be anymore. I've got people asking for that already, but you'll have to wait until tomorrow. Um, but but le let me just ask you this. Do you want to scale your business? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to get better reach? Do you want to get out there more on social media? Do you want more leads? Do you want more clients? Do you want more income? Do you want multiple streams of income? Do you want to have your best year yet in business? Do you want to make the most money you've ever had? Do you want to be the most successful you've ever been? Well, if you want all of that, then this mastermind is going to be for you. And most masterminds are two and four and five times the price of this. In fact, my mastermind, uh, my two higher level ones, are four and five times the price of this. Uh, I don't believe there's any mastermind like this in the country. I've got an amazing um, set of benefits and some bonuses I'm going to give you on my birthday tomorrow. So make sure you are here live. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> uh, and let me just do a shout out to everyone on the live for the stars. I'll just tune out on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. But let me do a shout out because some of you have been really generous here and you've been giving me stars for my birthday. So Stuart Davison, thank you for 500 stars. Stuart gives me stars on every video. What a lovely man he is. I can't wait to be working with you this year, Stuart. Um, who else do we have? Feel free to hit me up with some stars. I put all the star money, by the way back into the um, podcast, my personal brand, my live streams, you know, all the work that I do, uh, all the, the, the live stream equipment that we're going to buy, the upgrading of our quality of the stream, of the audio, of the video. Um, that was just a decision I made because it's, I'm not doing this for the money. I don't need the money. Um, I'm just, I'm really proud and privileged to be what probably well, definitely only one of 20 people in the whole world who are given this function by Facebook. I kind of want to show Facebook um, that I'm really worth investing in so that they can give me all the other features and maybe help grow my reach, etc. I really believe in working with the social media platforms if you can. Um, OK, so Ian Evans Piper, thanks for the stars. Um, Shia, if I've spelled that right, Palmer, thanks for the stars. Natalie Lewis, thanks for the stars and my birthday wish. It's my birthday today. Gracie, Gracie Smith, I'm looking forward to our call. Thank you for the 50 stars. Um, I know, I think Julie Hog, Hogbin sent me some stars. She's lovely. Thank you, Julie. I'm sure Kelly Forrester did because she's lovely. She's been giving me stars on every video. Thank you, Kelly Forrester. We've got a shadow day, haven't we? I'm nervous about that. I've got to give you a good day. There's a lot of pressure there. Um, Claire Honeyfield, thank you for the stars. Keely Simpson, thank you for the stars. 
I know this is not a flattering view of my face, but who cares? You don't follow me for my face. Steph Ferrucci, thank you for the stars. Claire Cowley, thank you for the stars. Josh Hanning, thank you for the stars. Steph Ferrucci, more stars. You are awesome. We spoke on the phone. That was great. Andy Lampard, thank you for the stars. Loads of stars. You're a legend. Yeah, I knew Kelly had. Thank you for all the stars, Kelly. Um, you give me 410 stars for my 40th birthday. I get one, I get 10 cents per star, by the way, just so you know. Claire, thank you for the stars. Michael Calasperas, thank you for the stars. Julie Hogbin, thank you for the stars. You're all lovely. Susan Batty Symes, thank you for the stars. All right, so I think we've covered everyone. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Watch out for tomorrow. It's going to be big. I'll probably end up getting two, 300 applications for, what, 41 places. So you'll want to be quick. I'll go live at, what, 8.45 a.m. again um, and then in the evening. Uh, and, oh, Gerald Ratner's just wished me happy birthday. Gerald's a lovely man. Um, uh, is it Conrad? Thank you for the 100 stars, Conrad. Have a great day. I'm off to McQueen.